Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we we'll have the latest from the live radar and for the latest weather warnings as we actually do have a thunderstorm warning issued for parts of Scotland over the next few days as we do see a bit of instability moving in combined with the heat at the moment we will cause a few storms as we do head over towards the end of this working week. As we'll see from the latest UKV, the heat isn't going anywhere. It's not likely to be as oppressive as it's been the last few days. We're unlikely to reach the sort of low to mid 30s like we have in places today and yesterday, but still into the high 20s, maybe pushing 30 degrees all the way towards the middle of next week as hot air does stick around. Now, we look like we are going to be completely under higher pressure, and that might be the reason why those temperatures won't be back into the low to mid 30s, because there's more likely to be clouds around, maybe a few showers as well, and all of that combined will stop those temperatures rising to those really high levels. If you don't like the oppressive heat, then that is a good signal. Still means it's going to be warm, still going to be up towards the heat wave thresholds but perhaps not uh, towards those very high levels that we have seen glimpses of over the past couple of days. As we progress into the longer range it's around the 20th maybe 21st of August now so in about a week's time that's when we're expecting the heat to finally subside so it's still got a decent stretch now of summer or proper summery conditions before we do return more towards average temperatures or below average and the reason for that is the jet stream does start to activate and that is because we see some energy injected into the jet stream towards northeast america um, where we do have some ex-tropical systems entering the north atlantic so at the moment unsure exactly what that will do as we head into the final 10 days of the month but it could allow some quite severe low pressure systems to head our way or at least turn us to more of a westerly fresher and unsettled flow so we've not got specifics but that is what we're thinking for the final third of the month so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. I've seen another pretty hot day today. quite Not quite as extensive and not quite as hot as we expected uh, from sort of the latest runs yesterday. And the reason for that is because the cloud and the bits and bobs of rain that were forecast in the east were actually even more extensive than, uh, than the models were showing. I was warning potentially they were too extensive in the latest model runs but actually they were understated and you can still see we've got some of this lighter rain just off the coast of east anglia and parts of kent this was quite far inland some of this rain a few hefty showers broke out and there's the risk of a few more hefty showers through this evening um, but at the moment nothing too much going on but generally it was just a lot of high level cloud associated with this and it did extend further north and westwards than we anticipated and that essentially meant that the temperatures didn't rise quite as high as we thought we thought it could get towards 34 or 35 degrees in the end we peaked around 31 or 32 some heftier showers in the north and west as well, already showing signs of a bit of a breakdown over the next day or two. Again, we're not seeing a substantial shift in uh, in the upper air temperatures, but slightly lower pressure does arrive, and that allows more cloud and a few showers. If you look at the temperatures, we're going this a bit later on in the evening, around 9pm, and you see where the peak temperatures were across parts of the East Midlands up towards northeast England. We thought this area would be more extensive, but it wasn't, and that's because you can see further southwards towards the London area, it's much, much lighter in those yellows and oranges, and this is because where we've seen those extensive cloud amounts that did extend further northwards as well. So those temperatures didn't quite rise as high as we thought, and it's all due to some of those clouds. Now, if you look at the max temperatures today, you can see widely 30 to 32 degrees. Again, ignore Lake and Heath that always crops up as the hottest, port, uh, hottest area, as it always is a few degrees higher. I think, again, errors at that station. But you can see that it's not the usual names on the top temperatures here. Normally, we see North Holt, Heathrow, um, some down towards the southeast, um, but not here. We've got a lot of northern based weather stations. Again, it's showing you the heat moving northwards today with Manchester up towards the northwest, northeast, um, up towards Yorkshire. That's where we've seen those top temperatures. 
today. Probably will return further southwards over the next few days as that heat retreats away. Uh, but at the moment, um, yeah, hottest in those northern areas. Now, do you quickly have a look at the weather warnings? Uh, again, we're not expecting you know huge thunderstorms. We've got a thunderstorm warning issued for this evening across those northern areas. It's put into force earlier today. It's one of those classic storm warnings um, where, uh, again, it's for scattered thunderstorms. You know, not expecting anything too major, but in localized areas could be pretty severe. Only issued this morning uh, at 10 a.m and it is in force until the rest of tonight. And then another warning uh, covering a similar area, but extended further westwards for Northern Ireland and for most of Scotland here for most of tomorrow, expiring at 10 p.m. Again, similar warning, most places will remain dry, but heavy showers and thunderstorms could occur again, giving a good inch of rain in some spots. Now, do look at the latest UKV to look at that in detail. You can see those hefty showers around earlier today, not seeing too much activity, but still around. And again, you can see that cloud and that rain in the east, again, more extensive than forecast, even impacting those hotter zones that we thought, again, holding those temperatures back. Into Thursday, though, we do see more array of hefty showers, especially across Scotland there for that warning zone, but they do clear into the evening. Further southwards, will still be hot, still touching high 20s, maybe 30 degrees but not quite as hot as it is at the moment and that's because those upper air temperatures do start to dip ever so slightly with this more of a westerly flow into friday it's a similar story less cloud and more sunshine again most likely temperatures will be around a similar level into the weekend a bit more in the way of cloud in some spots but it should fade away into the afternoon and evening and another stunning saturday afternoon there again temperature likely to be around those high 20s maybe low 30s sunday is very similar but we do see a few showers and a bit of cloud in the west and that could hold temperatures back a little bit into monday now if you look at the upper air temperatures still very hot in some eastern areas still very muggy but it does fade away as we head into thursday and thursday yes will still be warm but it should be fresher shouldn't be quite as humid and as muggy out there into friday we start to see those upper air temperatures returning, uh, sort of rising up in the south and southwest. Some very hot air arrives, but it never fully pushes in. We still get towards the high teens, maybe touching 20 degrees, but doesn't become too extensive. So not expecting those temperatures to get up into the mid 30s. But still, hotter air does return a good 5 to 10 degrees above average for the time of year, depending on where you are. Again, temperatures around that high 20s or low 30s. So you see this afternoon where those top temperatures were, pretty much wherever we avoided the cloud and the bits and bobs of rain. And you can see into Thursday, temperatures will be not quite as warm as they were today, but still mid to high 20s, up towards 28, 29. Again, I wouldn't rule out a localised 30 where we do see some sunshine if that cloud isn't quite as extensive. Into Friday, it's a similar story. Temperatures may be a bit more widely higher, 29 or 30 degrees for large portions of England and Wales. Again, not those very opp oppressive levels, but still hot, still heat wave sort of temperatures. Into Saturday, temperatures migrate, uh, or the hottest temperatures migrate further westwards. Not quite as hot, but 28, 29, again, localised 30, definitely looking possible. Sunday, it's a similar story, mid to high 20, still feeling very warm, just not quite as high as recently and then monday similar up to also those high 20s so you can see definitely dumbed down those temperatures a little bit today by a couple of degrees again most people won't know uh, won't, won't really notice much of a difference whether it's 30 degrees or 28 degrees it you know you're not going to really feel it all too much um but yeah we're expecting these to fluctuate a little bit all depending on the cloud amounts slight wind direction shifts um and of course how hot will those upper air temperatures be so these aren't set in stone but these are kind of the rough ballpark we're looking at high 20s maybe low 30s in some spots now if you do progress into the longer range we'll focus on what's going to happen after this heat wave subsides and that's as i said for all is looking likely to be into the middle of next week again we're going to see those temperatures fluctuate over the coming days but generally will be well above average until kind of next wednesday next thursday where we start to see some lower pressure moving in potentially some northerly winds then look out to our west look at this tropical system exiting out of northeast america uh, again uncertain how much land that will impact but a really strong system most likely a hurricane by this point it's not going to be a hurricane when it heads towards us but you can see it really powers up the jet stream and by the end of this run we see westerly winds pushing in you see look at the jet stream flattening because of that low doesn't mean we're going to be hit 
by that X hurricane, but its influence across the North Atlantic will change our weather patterns. And you can see we go from high pressure over the top of us, hot southerly winds, to lower pressure north or northwesterly winds. And you can see much fresher air masses, temperature deviation, blues moving in, and most likely see more and more rain. But if we do go back a little bit, you can see the actual low Today to our north impacts Iceland. Now, it could impact the UK. It's 10 days away. But regardless of where it goes, what it will do, or what the most likely scenario is, is for it to definitely flatten the jet stream. We can see that here. This really igniting the jet stream on its southern flank, flattening the jet stream and heading it straight over the top of us from going from very amplified to a flat westerly, or at least a very strong westerly, um, based jet stream there as we head towards the end of august that's something to keep a very very close eye on again not got the details but definitely weather pattern shift looking likely if that x hurricane does what these models are forecasting now if you look at the latest gm again high pressure in control all the way until kind of the middle of next week a low pressure system does break through again it looks like it could start as a tropical system a very weak tropical depression perhaps before developing into a more classic atlantic low and then we see that x hurricane coming out of the north atlantic impacting the jet stream sat more to our west impacting a bit of a block there towards Iceland, but regardless, it completely changes the pattern across the North Atlantic. And again, that strong westerly flow starts to emerge again, could cause some real issues there as we do progress into the final week of August. Maybe not giving us, you know, strong winds or super heavy rain, but just will turn that to more of a westerly regime, which is a lot more unpredictable and could change a lot day on day. Now, if you finally finish by looking at the latest ECMWF, again, very similar over the coming days, but very strong high pressure all the way through this weekend is the start of next week, so do enjoy it. But then again, later on next week, we see that ex-tropical system heading straight for the North Atlantic, and this actually looks like it could impact Scotland if this high doesn't deflect it. It looks really strong there, looking like it's going to go somewhere towards Iceland and Northern Scotland. Again, could cause some issues. But the big thing is it's going to flatten that jet stream and bring all of this fresher air in from the north. Now, after you finish, by having a look at the latest ensembles, if we do do quickly refresh this, you can see our pressure temperature is dropping slightly over the next day or two, uh, down towards only five degrees above average, uh, there or thereabouts, and then we return more towards kind of six to eight degrees, maybe up towards 10 degrees above average, into early next week or through the weekend. So turning much, much hotter once again, as we saw from the UKV, more consistent high 20s, maybe 30 degrees there. Uh, and yeah, very, very strong summer time conditions. But as I said, it's around the 20th, 21st, 22nd, around that range, we start to drop off in around a week's time. And you can see upper air temperatures return more towards average, precipitation picking up and again, showing that pattern change to more of a westerly regime. Sea level pressure, really rising into the weekend as the high really takes hold and then really dropping off around that breaking point where we start to see low pressure at least having more of an influence there into latter part of august and if we finish by looking at the latest ecm wf it's probably very very similar drop off at the moment but the upper air temperatures rise back towards kind of five to eight degrees above average into early next week and then again around the 20th 21st drop off back towards average and again noticeably high precipitation there for around the 21st through towards the end of the month so definitely if you have got plans around the final 10 days of august at the moment not looking likely to be blue skies widespread high pressure and hot conditions definitely looks like to be at least a lot more mixed again can't rule out some really nice days or even consecutive nice days there uh, if we're lucky but there will always be the risk of showers always be the risk of weather fronts moving in bits and bobs of rain if we see those westerly flows really taking off so we keep a very close eye on it but if you do love the summer like conditions then Definitely next week is looking very pleasant, but after that, definitely looks like we are on a downward spiral to more probably autumnal-like conditions there for the final 10 days or so of August. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.